this video, we will show you how to disassemble the Liebherr LR1250 crawler crane fitted with main boom and luffing jib. Please read the operating manual delivered with the machine prior to disassembly, or if you have further questions. Always make sure you wear the proper personal protective equipment, PPE. When working at dangerous heights, fall protection must always be used. Disassembly begins with the startup of the basic machine. If required, turn on the main battery switch. It is located in the upper carriage behind the cab. Before startup, please always check the motor oil and cooling water levels. Now the LR1250 engine is ready to be cranked. Lower the hooks and position them on the ground. Make sure that there is an appropriate support. Please refer to the operating manual for the ideal boom position depending on the boom configuration. Now the jib can be lowered until it leaves the active load chart. Activate the assembly self-lock function on the X23 control panel in order to be able to work outside the valid load chart. Furthermore, assembly functions must be pre-selected so that all assembly functions and cylinders can be used. The assembly mode wrench symbol on the monitor indicates the relevant mode. Now you can continue to lower the jib. Please ensure that the hoist rope is gradually retracted during the lowering process in order to prevent damage to the rope. As soon as the jib head is low enough, remove the weight and chains of the hoisting limit switch. Further manually bypass the switch and detach the rope socket from the dead end lug. Remove the rope protection from the hook. Thanks to the innovative rope socket, assembly and disassembly of the rope can be carried out quickly and easily. Remove the rope protection from the jib head and unreave the main rope. Continue to lower the jib until the running rollers on the jib head touch the ground. As soon as the boom is beyond the normal working radius, make sure that the jib head remains on the ground and the pendant straps are taut when the boom is lowered. The running rollers on the jib head facilitate the positioning process. Then, the hoist rope can be reeved from the jib to the main boom head. Depending on the boom configuration and according to the operating manual, it may be required to remove the rope guide and the midpoint suspension. Then lower the A-frame 3 until the pendant straps are positioned on the jib and disconnect them. Connect the pendant straps of the A-frame to the jib foot using slings and shackles. Lift the A-frame 3 until the pendant straps are taut. Remove the electric plug in the jib head and pull the electric cable to the jib foot using a cable reel. Then, insert the plug again in the transport socket as bypass. Disconnect the jib from the jib foot by removing the pins. Start with the lower pins. Remove the spring cotter pins and washers. When removing the pins, please ensure nobody is in the danger zone. Now, lower the jib foot and separate the upper connections by removing the pins. In order to protect the single jib sections, always support those using appropriate wood blocks. Store the pins in the specially designed brackets and secure them with the spring cotter pins and washers. Now, lift the main boom together with the jib foot and travel slightly backwards. Then position the boom again. Support the main boom head and the jib foot with appropriate wood blocks before contact is made with the ground. 
lower A-frame 3 until the slings can be removed from the pendant straps. Subsequently, drive A-frames 2 and 3 together until the pendant straps of the jib foot can be brought into transport position. It is important to make sure that the hydraulic jib backstop cylinders are not retracted all the way. Connect the main rope with the sling of A-frame 2 and pull A-frame 2 and 3 backwards until the backstay straps of the jib rest on the main boom and can be disconnected. For this purpose, A-frames 2 and 3 have to be parted. Again, check that the hydraulic backstop cylinders don't get retracted all the way. Then, lower and position A-frames 2 and 3 to the front and remove the pins from the backstops of the jib. Disconnect the main rope and pull it back onto the winch. Remove the rope protection from the jib foot. Disconnect the rope socket of the jib luffing rope and connect it to the blue nylon rope. Unreave the luffing rope and reave the blue nylon rope respectively. Disconnect the blue nylon rope from the luffing rope and wind the luffing rope on the jib luffing winch. Subsequently, mount the rope protection again. Depending on the boom configuration and according to the operating manual, it may be required to remove the rope guide and the midpoint suspension. Now, lower A-frame 1 until the boom pendant straps are in transport position. Disconnect the pendant straps and connect the pendant straps of A-frame 1 with the boom foot using pins. Lift A-frame 1 until the pendant straps are taut. Disconnect the electric cable from the main boom head and wind it on the cable reel. Plug the electric cable in the connection socket in the boom foot again. Remove the lower pins of the boom foot and then completely lower the boom foot to the ground. Then remove the upper pins and travel the LR1250 slightly backwards. Now the rear counterweight is to be disassembled. The rear counterweight cylinder is controlled via the remote control delivered with the machine. Switch off the machine and connect the remote control to the socket in the upper carriage. Restart the machine and select the cylinder function in order to control the cylinders via the control unit. Completely extend the cylinders and unpin the counterweight from the upper carriage by pulling the mechanical locking pins. When lowering the counterweight, ensure it is in a horizontal position. Disconnect the rear counterweight by disconnecting the lifting chains. Before removing the remote control, switch off the machine. Store the remote control in the designated tray. Then carefully travel the basic machine forwards. Further disassembly is carried out with the help of the self-assembly cylinder on the boom foot. In order to control the cylinder, the button Assembly Cylinder must be pressed on the X23 control panel. A cylinder symbol is displayed on the monitor. The function is then controlled via the joystick for lifting, lowering, hoist drum 2. Attach the assembly rigging delivered with the machine on the assembly cylinder. For further disassembly of the rear counterweight, remove the tie-downs. Then the counterweight slabs can be removed one by one and loaded for transportation. The next step is to disassemble the jib and main boom. The working steps, therefore, are identical and will be shown on the basis of jib head disassembly. Position the basic machine in front of the jib and disconnect the pendant straps. Bring the pendant straps into transport position and secure them. Attach the slings on the upper pins and lift the jib slightly. Remove the lower pins, support the jib and lower it to the ground. Then remove the upper pins. Dismount the anemometer and, if required, the FAA warning light on the main boom and luffing jib head. 
Attach the slings on the designated lifting points and lift the jib head. Now it can be loaded for transportation. For jib foot disassembly, attach the slings on the designated lifting points again. Cut the electric connection between main boom and jib foot and connect the plug with the dummy socket. Connect the bypass plug to the connection socket on the boom head. Subsequently, remove the pins from the jib foot and lift it. Please use suitable edge protection and during transportation of the boom jib sections, always use an auxiliary rope to stabilize them. The next step is to remove the car body counterweight. First, the platform on the undercarriage has to be disassembled. For this purpose, remove all pin locks and then lift the platform away. For transportation, the attachment beams are slid into the car body counterweights. Tools and auxiliary devices can be stored in the storage compartments of the car body counterweights. Attach the slings on the designated lifting points and hoist the car body counterweight slabs. The car body counterweight slabs can be transported under the boom sections to save space. Furthermore, the jib sections can be placed in the boom sections, so providing another advantage for transportation. For crawler side frame disassembly, switch off the machine and remove the mechanical wedging. Attach the lifting chains to the crawler track pads. Then, disconnect the hydraulic lines between the crawlers and the undercarriage via quick connections. The next step is to raise the crane with the help of the jack-up cylinders. In order to do so, fold out the cylinders from their parking position and fix them with pins. Make sure that the ground conditions are sufficiently firm and level. The outrigger pads for the jack-up cylinders are placed in the useful storage trays on the undercarriage during operation. In order to activate the cylinders, you first have to pre-select the cylinder function on the right-hand X23 control panel. Then control is shifted to the manual valves on the undercarriage. Bring the cylinder into the lower pinning position in order to allow for maximum supporting height and then extend the cylinder until contact is made with the ground. The alignment of the upper carriage can be checked using the level gauge located on the undercarriage by the control levers. During this process, ensure that the cylinders are equally extended. Then attach the slings on the designated lifting points. The foldable design prevents the crawlers from damaging the assembly rigging. Remove the pins from the crawler side frames and pull the crawler off the car body wings. The assembly work using the cylinder is now completed and the rigging can be removed and the cylinder tied to the boom foot. Then lower the boom foot completely and disconnect the pendant straps of A-frame 1. Now attach slings to the pendant straps of A-frame 1 in order to lift the boom foot. The boom foot offers various lifting points. The lifting point used in order to lift the boom foot smoothly and level depends on whether a luffing or auxiliary drum is installed or not. Lift the A-frame until the slings are taut. Switch off the machine. Disconnect the electric cable and the hydraulic quick connection of the boom foot from the upper carriage and connect the bypass plug. The hydraulic pins of the boom foot are again controlled via the remote control. Connect it to the upper carriage. First of all, switch off the machine and plug in the control unit. Then restart the machine and select Cylinder Functions. Now the remote control can be operated. Remove the hydraulic pins and load the boom foot. 
Fix the hose package to the designated transport brackets. Align the upper and lower carriage and mount the house lock. Now the truck can push the trailer under the upper carriage and the upper carriage can be lowered. Again, please make sure that the jack-up cylinders are retracted equally and continuously check the level. Don't forget to pre-select the cylinder function. After the LR1250 has been positioned, tie it down on the trailer. Lower the A-frame 1 into transport position. For this purpose, the cylinder adjustment function must be pre-selected in the cab and the button Extend A-frame Cylinder on the X23 must be pressed. By actuating the joystick to lift the main boom hoist drum, the A-frame is lowered. After the limit switch, A-frame rear has been reached. Press the button A-frame Cylinders to completely lower the A-frame onto the upper carriage. Press the button on the X12 control in the operator's cab to retract the main boom backstops. Then bring the jack-up cylinders into their parking position by further retracting and repinning them. Subsequently, the cylinders can be completely retracted and folded in. Unlock the cab and bring it into transport position manually. Lock the crane. Remove the railings on the upper carriage and if required, the exhaust pipe. The LR1250 is now ready for transportation to the next job site.